Hello and welcome to Bottom Line. Well, another suspected coal mine tragedy in Meghalaya. I'm saying suspected because the government is yet to confirm whether the incident, the tragedy, took place at, uh, at, at an illegal coal mine. Uh, but the news is as many as six people died in an accident at an abandoned mine site in the state's East Jaintia Hills district yesterday. Once again, raising questions if illegal coal mining was going on unabated in the state despite restrictions. The tragedy took place at the Sorkari forest area near Rimbai. Official sources said that while five of the miners died inside the mine, one succumbed to injuries later. While district officials are yet to confirm whether it was a coal mine, family members of the deceased who arrived there to claim the bodies uh, said that uh, the workers were engaged in earth cutting for a coal mine when the crane they were using snapped, leading to the tragedy. The bodies of the five deceased were identified have been handed over to family members after conducting post-mortem at the Cleariat Community Health Centre. Five of the deceased hailed from Assam, while one was yet to be identified. The incident, as we said, raises questions. What were the six workers doing in the area if they were not engaged in a coal mine? Is illegal mining continuing unabated in Meghalaya despite, despite a ban in place? And, of course, this is the second major coal mine tragedy, if we, can call the, if we can call this one, in Meghalaya after the infamous December 2018 tragedy in Kasan. On that occasion, at least 15 miners were trapped in the mine at Kasan with rescue efforts continuing till March 2019, while two bodies were, re were retrieved back then. Bodies of the remaining 13 could not be found. So, while an official confirmation is still to come from the government, whether it was indeed a coal mine, questions are already being raised on the incident leading back to the row over illegal mining and transportation of coal in the politically volatile state. Before we move ahead, let's listen in to what Meghalaya Home Minister uh, Lakman Rimbui had to say over the incident. Sorkari, near Rambai, so when they went there, they found a six person were lying in the hut, already dead. So, the, since there is no people there to ask the police, so they are trying to ascertain the cause of uh, death. Privacy, it seems that there is an uh, accident. It seems that there is an accident that uh, the crane is due to some defect, maybe, maybe due to some defect, so this is happened. So the process of infection of those diseases is being done, and five people have been, could be identified, and one, till I speak this, now, uh, I didn't get the information. So, and the sardar of that, uh, bring those people also, he is absconding. So all formalities relating to this incident, the police have been uh, looked into and uh, necessary inquiry has been done, uh, is being done. And uh, report we will get after. My, uh, is, it? Ha is it confirmed that uh, these uh, 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 people who have uh, died, they are uh, uh, they died because due to coal mining or is it uh, to Illegal, due uh, to other mining activities? Uh, I cannot ascertain as of now. I cannot ascertain whether they died due to coal mining or not. But uh, six persons have been died. Uh, prima facie that uh, there is an accident uh, where the crane which being used in mining uh, is being uh, they do some defects, so it collapsed. So, privacy, but the exact report I don't get with me right now. Accident is accident, and uh, accident can happen anywhere, anytime. But this is happened if at all there is illegal mining. If at all there is illegal mining, it happen when they are doing illegal thing. So, the law will take its own course. They are doing their job, it is because of the off they are doing their job. That's why we could contain all these things. Otherwise, uh, it may be free for all. So I, I myself, I will congratulate the district administration. I congratulate because of their uh, 
close monitoring. That's why we could uh, see that uh, the illegal mining activities in the state is so there we have the Meghalaya Home Minister Lakman Rimbo is saying that, well, if it is illegal mining, the law will take its own course. But the government uh, clearly yet to confirm whether the tragedy, the incident is related to illegal mining. We'll very quickly listen in to the, the family members of the, of, of the five of the victims uh, who, uh, who reached East Jainte Hills today to collect their bodies. Uh, they, they clearly say that uh, the workers were engaged in a coal mine. तो ये वहाँ जगह का काम कर रहा है वो कितने आदमी लोग हैं छह आदमी छह आदमी तो पूरा छह आदमी मर गया पूरा छह आदमी मर गया अच्छा क्या काम क्या काम कर रहा है कटिंग का काम करता है कोई किसे कटिंग कैला का कटिंग या क्या कटिंग कैला का कटिंग है मतलब क्लियर हुआ नहीं हुआ अभी कटिंग चल रहा है लेकिन कैला अभी तक भी निकल नहीं निकला नहीं निकला अच्छा कितना अब तो गया उधर में हम तो गया है कितना कितना गड्ढा है एक सौ आशी फुट एक सौ आशी फुट एक सौ आशी फुट इनका मालिक का नाम आपको मालूम है नाम तो हम इतना मालूम नहीं है हम तो इधर में कभी गया ही नहीं है अच्छा तो ये जो छह आदमी मरा हुआ है सब का सब आपका अपना बस्ती का आदमी है नहीं नहीं हमारा तो पांच आदमी दूसरे जगह मरो तो कोरिमोंड लिलंबाजार हो तो लातावाड़ी इधर का आदमी है और बाकी हमारा काटी वाला डिस्ट्रिक्ट का लेबर होता है जीपी इधर का एक आदमी हमारा अपना भाई है अभी जो भी so there, the relatives claiming they were involved in earth cutting for a coal mine and the victims mostly hail, the five who have been identified mostly hail from Karim Ganj, Karim Ganj district of Assam. Now again, uh, the big question that arises is that is illegal mining continuing in Meghalaya despite the government claiming otherwise? The issue has been a matter of uh, debate and war of words has taken place between the opposition Congress and the government over, over alleged illegal transportation of coal in the last few months. To take the discussion forward, I'm being joined by social, social activist from Meghalaya, Agnes Karshing. I also have with me Mr. H.H. H. Mormon, environmentalist, is joining me from Jaintia Hills. Naba Bhattacharji, Mr. Naba Bhattacharji, Chairman of State Expert Appraisal Committee on Environment, is also joining me from Shillong. And in a short while from now, we'll also be joined by Chairman Grand Council of Chiefs, Mr. John Karshing. If I can go to uh, Ms. Agnes Karshing first. Uh, Agnes Karshing, another alleged, I say alleged, coal mine tragedy in Meghalaya's East Jainte Hills. Does this raise eyebrows again, especially at a time when there has been a fierce war of words between the government and opposition on the issue? Agnes Karshing. Uh, definitely. And as you all know, and people see that a lot of uh, coal trucks are plying, plying every day, every night. And uh, I think even the public will uh, agree. But uh, it seems uh, the government is uh, blind. And uh, actually, the very fact I would say, I would request that the government should, should provide uh, escorts for all the media to go to that place. And if that uh, the government is clear, is clean, they you should believe, give the full support. You believe to the, the media government to go should to take the media now. team with full. Ex the government should take the media team with full escort, independent verification. <coughs> yes. Yes, I. Uh, that is the only way that you can get the real facts there. You will see the place that is. Coal mining is still carrying on. And that is why. Why are people dying when there's no more coal? What are, why are people dying in these areas? They are bringing in people to do, because laborers, they are poor. They need jobs. So they bring people. And there are camps around. And it's not that the government doesn't know anything. Give, give full security, we will go and uh, show the reality. Strong words there from Agnes Kershing. Agnes Kershing, of course, has been at uh, the forefront in the campaign against illegal coal mining in Meghalaya. Uh, Mr. H.H. H. Mormon, Mr. H.H. H. Mormon, another tragedy, another tragedy in East Jaintia Hills. Well, it's a cause of concern, irrespective of whether 
it is a coal mine or not, it's, it's a big cause of concern, isn't it, Mr. Mormon? Um, thank you for having me. Uh, this lie has been going on for four decades now. So I call it a, a lie which has been going for four decades. Because even when this activity was supposedly believed to be legal, it was illegal, you know? So after we have campaigned against this illegal uh, mining, uh, petrol mining, then NGT uh, came into, uh, you know, into the, into the uh, mine life, uh, into the plane. So ban coal mining in 2014. And then, you know, it, the ban was lifted last year by the Supreme Court, but with a caveat that uh, the government should, uh, you know, ensure that all the, the regulations should be strictly followed, you know, if, if coal mining is to be issued. And also the extracted coal, supposedly extract coal, because we know there is no more extracted coal. But it was like the, you know, the leader of the opposition has, uh, on his last visit to the coal mine area in this venture, he himself has found that the coal was fresh coal, you know. So, you know, and with regard to the government saying that they're not certain if this, uh, this accident is uh, related to coal mining, as the head home minister said, I mean, the very fact that there are cranes and the cranes are operating in the coal mine, it means that the activity is going on, you know. Why would they use the crane if there is no mining? So the very fact that the crane is there, it's evident that uh, the activity is going on. But, you know, everybody knows that this uh, mining activity is going on in spite of the government, you know, not uh, adhering to the Supreme Court uh, order. So, so you are saying that there is little doubt, there is little doubt apparently that that was a coal mining site, is it, Mr. Mormon? The way coal mining is done now, you know, we have done away with the rat hole mining. Rat hole per se, you know, they both the system of rat hole mining. The rat hole mining we are using now, now is called box cutting. You know, just like the, the, the rat hole mining, which, you know, the accident, an accident, you know, when it happens. So, you know, to go deep into the, the shaft, they need cranes. So that's why they use cranes. And in this case, they're using cranes. So that's, uh, uh, you know, that's the accident happened. You know? Because the cranes, uh, because of the cranes. All right. Uh, if, if, if I can go back to Ms. Agnes Kharshing. Uh, Ms. Kharshing, you believe, you believe that despite all the claims of containing any illegal activity as far as coal mining is concerned, things continue to be discouraging in Meghalaya. They are uh, hiding and uh, yes, we, there are uh, even earlier police were transferred. Police were transferred if they, uh, they are honest in trying to expose all this uh, uh, racket that is going on, you know the illegal uh, activities of coal and uh, good police are transferred immediately and uh, now send a, a good dedicated team and if they are there now also give them full security that there should be no threats because as you know earlier one police was shot in was killed in uh, Patharkama until date the case is still in Supreme Court mm -hmm. Because he detected, he uh, uh, arrested, uh, I mean, he uh, stopped, stopped coal uh, trucks. the transportation of 32 trucks and he was killed. And they say he, he committed a suicide. But Mr. I would say, on record, I would say he was murdered. Mr. Navabhattacharji, Mr. Navabhattacharji, how complex, how complex is this entire issue of coal mining in Meghalaya? It's definitely a very complex situation, isn't it? Uh, 
uh, yeah, I definitely agree. It is a, uh, a complicated uh, uh, situation. And uh, the complications came uh, with the ban in 2014. Till 2015, uh, end of 2015, me with a uh, few of the Supreme Court uh, lawyers, we were the commissioners of the court. And uh, we could uh, contain the movement after the ban was imposed. But subsequently, you see, it is not a complex situation of only the uh, uh, government of the state, but uh, including the tribunals and the courts. When uh, the ban was imposed, because we need to go to the uh, a little bit into the past. If you are aware, Mr. Nabarun, I think you will remember that right from 2016, to 2018, 18, 19, there are numerous occasions when the tribunal allowed transportation of coal even after the ban of the materials, the coal which was supposedly to be lying on the uh, mine head and in the mines. And I think uh, the tribunal had done in its wisdom to allow so that further environmental damage does not happen when the coal is lying unattended and uh, that leads to a lot of leaching and uh, release of AMD and other uh, chemicals. So a uh, coal when left overground unattended into the vagaries of weather, particularly during the monsoon, is much, much more dangerous to the environment than it is when it is in the under the ground before the pre-mining. So that sets the ball uh, rolling, if I may say, to the cascading effects. And in absence of very clear-cut policy from all aspects, I would not only uh, put the onus on the state government, but uh, I would also say that the tribunals and others also, in spite of their best efforts, they had not taken a holistic uh, approach, particularly in implementing the ban and monitoring of the ban, where there should have been a third party monitoring of the ban, whether it is actually being implemented or uh, executed. Third as part far as... Yeah. Third party monitoring. Uh, well, uh, Agnes Karshing, Agnes Karshing, the government, the state government has also agreed that it faces the challenge of illegal coal mining, but it says that it is continuously taking steps to curb the menace of illegal transportation. Uh, do you think these promises, these words are translating into results on ground? The government knows there is no more coal. It is, it is already depleted. This is all new coal. And anything that is new coal is illegal. Mm -hmm. Because it's being... That is why these uh, activities are still... People are dying inside. Now allow... Better take us to that place and show if he it was because if they say that it is uh, mine uh, quarrying for some other uh, activity, sure. Why are people? Uh, nobody could go to those places. They are scared because who is putting who's put putting threats? We have to know. We have the police. They should find out who are these people who are trying to stop all this. We cannot have a run that is. Uh, government that is having activities of goons. The who threats? Who gives threats to even to police? Police cannot These go very, there. Very strong How can words. That be? Very strong words there. Very strong allegations. Strong allegations uh, from Agnes Kashing. Uh, Mr. H. H. Morman, uh, what is your assessment on the situation on 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 ground? Uh, 
despite denial, do you think, do you think illegal uh, coal mining continues to be a reality in the Jente Hills district, especially in East Jente Hills? Do you think it, it continues to be a reality? It's, it's an open secret. Open that, secret. Uh, the illegal mining is continuing. And uh, not only in East Jente Hills, in some areas of West Jente Hills too, there are illegal mining that is going on. Uh, although now, you know, they, they, they don't uh, stop it in places which are visible. You know, they, you know, they, they go, you know, somewhere which is not visible to, you know, to the public, uh, public eyes. So, there's no doubt. I mean, we raise this, when I, in my column, I have almost every time raised this issue and ask the government to come, you know, for what? They say that there's no uh, illegal mining. But, uh, you know, there is illegal mining. These are again, again, very, very, very strong words. What is the way forward? What is the way forward? Will there, will there be a stop? stop to these as 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 you're claiming will will there be a stop to this or or or, or is there too much involved or is there too much involved for this to stop see it's uh, actually the supreme court ruling has you know come up with very uh, you know the, the, the order, very clear order to the government when the first order was that the supposedly extracted coal should be handed over to the coal india limited but that, has, that has not been done, as far as we know. And then all mining should follow the you know, rules and regulations, you know, as per national laws. So even that is not being done. So, I mean, if the state government is really interested in uh, allowing uh, or resuming coal mining in, 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 the, in, in the state, they should have uh, at least uh, follow the court order, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's not what you see what is happening now. Absolutely. Uh, we are also being joined uh, by Mr. John Kashing, Chairman, Grand Council of Chiefs. Uh, Mr. Kashing, welcome to Bottom Line. Well, uh, another tragedy. Another tragedy in East Jente Hills. Six people died in an incident uh, in an abandoned mine. Uh, we are yet to get official confirmation whether uh, it's, it, 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 it was a coal mine, illegal coal mine. But nevertheless, a tragedy once again raises a lot of concerns uh, in, in, in Meghalaya. Once again, there has been a lot of, lot of noise about illegal coal mining continuously, especially with the opposition uh, continuously attacking the government. But then, uh, well, it seems... Uh, there are allegations that things are continuing unabated. <coughs> Hello. Yeah, can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm saying I'm saying another tragedy, another tragedy in East Jaintia Hills. We are yet to get a confirmation, official confirmation, whether it's a coal mine, an illegal coal mine. But nevertheless, uh, it has once again uh, brought the focus back to the issue of illegal coal mining in Meghalaya, isn't it? Uh, yes, at the, at the outset, this is uh, very sad. Six, according to initial reports, I, I don't have any much details except for what is going on on social media and uh, news, that about six uh, precious lives have been lost. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I can only sum it as, uh, you know, lack of political will. That's the bottom line, you know. Uh, and it involves not only the state, it involves the government of India. It involves the judiciary. So they have to, you know, it requires uh, the complex land holding system of Meghalaya requires real initiative by all the uh, authorities concerned. So, you know, as I think saw one of the panelists had mentioned that uh, apparently from initial reports, we get that there was a crane which was active, you know, and the, apparently the cable snapped or something like that. 
uh, these are just you know initial uh, preliminary information i mean it's not uh, it's not a small rat hole it's a big crane uh, <laughs> How can anybody deny, you know, that this is going on? So I would say, you know, it is time for the state government to seriously get into this, uh, sort out the legalities, the constitutional legalities, fix the governance issues. Uh, we heard some of the panelists mentioning about, you know, officers being transferred. Uh, we've seen allegations. We've seen so many, uh, you know, recent uh, hue and cry about the illegal uh, smuggling of coal. So, you know, it's a, it's a matter of governance. So if governance uh, collapses, then you have a serious situation. So if the rule of law does not uh, work, God help us, you know. So it is it is really... Uh, governance accountability issue... Accountability has to be fixed. Governance accountability issue... Accountability has to be fixed, you know, yes. because this is not something that has been uh, there just yesterday, eh? This is like for last many years, you recall with the NGT coming in. So I think, uh, you know, it's a systemic collapse of governance. Systemic collapse of governance. Big allegations. Uh, we have to go for a very short break here. Stay tuned. A lot more on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching Bottom Line. We're discussing the alleged illegal coal mine tragedy, another one in Meghalaya. Uh, Agnes Kharshing, Agnes Kharshing, you yourself have been at the receiving end of the coal mafia. Uh, do you think it's, it's, it's extremely difficult, very difficult to independently probe, uh, if at all, that uh, illegal coal mining continues? Uh, yes, definitely. Everybody has. We have a government where we have all the departments that are uh, experts. They will know. So allow such people to go into it. And if they say that don't go there, it is scared, it means that somebody is promoting uh, violence. And when we have a government, the police are there to protect people. And if in, in my case, the very fact that in the attack with, uh, against me and Amita, it was police which promoted because that is why in our case they have not registered, the, they have not uh, given the uh, section 120B conspiracy. So everybody is scared to go. Because who is promoting these violence? Send a good team of police. There are good police, yes, we have. Send them and flush this all out. We cannot have people dying like this. Mr. H.H. H. Mormon, Mr. H.H. H. Mormon, do you think uh, law and order, uh, especially in mining areas, continue to be, uh, be an issue? Uh, the situation continues to be precarious. The very fact that uh, what is happening to Agnes and Amita, you know, it's, it's proof enough to, <clears throat> for every one of us to say that, you know, that a lot of things happened in that case. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the sad part is people who are involved uh, in the, you know, uh, alleged, allegedly involved in the attack against Agnes, are in the corridor of power. So, you know, how do you really expect that the uh, will prevail in such a situation? So, you know, they are very sad that we continue to say that there is illegal transport of coal, and this is happening. So, who supported this? Because it's, it's not the government. Uh, the government machinery. So, it, 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 we have been uh, in this 
Strong words from both uh, an environmentalist and also the activist. Uh, Agnes Kharshing, Agnes Kharshing, as per the common perception, as per the common perception, uh, successive governments have uh, allegedly failed to curb uh, illegal coal transportation. Why do you think is that? Because of the funds, so much of money, there's a lot of funds that is promoting. And who is, find, who is funding? We have to, the uh, government has to find out who is funding all this. It's all about funds. Where is it coming from? And, and also, also... There are and, poor people. Yeah. Also, also at a time uh, when the government is saying there is no illegal mining, uh, can we say there is no corroboration of the same on ground probably? For instance, the Luka, the river Luka is more acidic blue than ever, uh, which, which also hints at, of course, uh, uh, the, the, the mining angle. The, uh, we, uh, we have the pollution board, we have the experts, the research, and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we know that uh, talking to some youth, they told me <coughs> that the alkaline, al alkaline from the cement plants is turning it blue. <coughs> and we also know that the coal activity is carrying together with the coal, cement and coal together. Mr. <coughs> ne Mr. Neva Bhattacharji, well, we cannot deny the damage to environment when it comes to Jayantia Hills, isn't it? And uh, well, it's, 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 it's probably too late in the day, but never too late to start to restore things, isn't it? Exactly. And... Uh environment has borne the brunt and uh, you see we have been flagging off such issues through PILs through other courts intervention during the last eight nine years but you see court can only give orders who implements and executes these orders on the ground is very very important it again comes back to the state to implement and one important aspect which we are missing out as far as the environment and related mining activities are concerned, that uh, I find it uh, 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 very unexplainable that uh, I don't know how many of are aware that the, neither the Supreme Court nor the National Green Tribunal has banned scientific and environment, benign mining, even coal mining in the state of Meghalaya. The Supreme Court has said the coal belongs to the tribal people and they are the custodians, but all MMDR and other acts and environment clearance and under the Environment Protection Act, the laws of the land has to be followed even if the coal belongs to the local tribal uh, inhabitant. But it is very uh, surprising, Nabarun, that uh, till date, it's almost two years the Supreme Court has passed these orders, but we were not seeing much effort towards this legal scientific mining. And it is not very difficult there are certain set of rules. It has to go through the Ministry of Mines. It has to go through the State Environment Impact Authority the, and the DGMS for the mine safety. Now, taking all these into context, you see the mine safety. What has happened is because total absence of mine safety. 
what is happening to the environment because the proper EIA and EMP studies are not carried out and this is what is happening to the Luka River. So mining scientific way with proper adherence to the environmental norms, still mining can be carried out and uh, neither Supreme Court nor the NGT has stopped legal mining in Meghalaya even today. What has been banned is illegal mining and what do you mean by illegal mining when you do not conform to all the acts and rules which are in place and clearance from the concerned ministries and authorities so people are not coming forward for this uh, to come forward for this legal mining which the government should insist on that is very very important you cannot do policing all over the state and stop this in every jungle, every corner. It is not possible. Even if you put the army, the CRP, I have been a commissioner. I have seen for one and a half years. Of course, we could stop to a large extent, but it is not possible. So the only way you say is that you have to do scientific mining as part the carrying capacity of those areas concerned and you will see a sea change. Now, coming back to the other uh, institute which are responsible for monitoring when it comes to environment, because I'm not a mining expert. You see, proper monitoring has to be done from all aspects. These are cement companies, for example, they give their long list of adherence of compliance to the different norms, where there is the ambient air quality, the water quality, and other aspects. But who is studying this? Those should be more diligently studied. And wherever this lacuna, shortfall, and non-adherence, action should be taken, deterrent action. So these are certain uh, things where there has to be a concerted effort from all concerned. Otherwise, the easy way out is to go for this illegal mining. I really mourn the six lives lost if the mine safety protocols were in place. Of course, we do not know whether it is from a live mine or the death has happened in an abandoned mine. Things will be likely be more clear in the next few days. Reportedly an abandoned mine, but uh, uh, I would like to get uh, Mr. H.H. Mormon here. Mr. Mormon, why are we still so far away from scientific mining? Are we even working towards it? That is the bigger question that needs to be asked. Mr. Mormon. Uh, in a, the way we are happening now, it looks like the government is purposely avoiding, you know, legalizing the activity. You know, or following the Supreme Court uh, order. So it, it looks like the government is not even interest, interested in, 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 in uh, doing this legally. Uh, maybe because like they used to argue that the seeds of the coal is very small. You know, so it's very difficult to do different kind of mining other than the the rat hole mining. So if that is the case, then, you know, it's difficult to do any kind of scientific mining. And the other thing is, uh, the way I see it is, the, the state government is in a fact 22 situation. Uh, you know, from one, si uh, from one side, they want to promote tourism, which means, uh, you know, to, because tourism in Meghalaya has to go along with uh, nature. And at the same time, they want to promote tourism. So, you know, this is so, it's like trying to juggle the ball. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, the government, you know, it's not going anywhere in both directions. Sorry to say that, yeah. Mr. John Cushing, Mr. John Cushing again, uh, do you think... Okay, the NGT ban came in 2014, but even before that, even before that, there was the least regard for safety measures. 
safety measures in the mines of uh, Jaintia Hills, which should have been there. Even governments before that, after all, the, these were human beings working in those mines. Of course, it became illegal post-2014. It has continued uh, for decades before that. And probably one thing that we completely missed is the safety aspect of things, uh, which is only getting more highlighted now because the entire process is illegal. For decades before that, probably one thing that we completely missed is the safety aspect of things. Yes, I fully agree. Uh, I think a proper investigation, you know, will again reveal that there were, you know, this was another attempt on, uh, you see, why, why would they risk, why would whoever, whoever who is the behind this uh, mining, why would they risk venturing into such a illegal thing if there was not, if there was, uh, if they were not sure of uh, high political patronage, right? If they were not sure that, you know, the whole system was fixed, uh, in fact, I should tell you, you know, it's all about governance issue. If if there was a political will, as I think one of the panelists said, you know, a lot of these orders, a lot of these uh, measures, you know, the efforts to uh, to mention them on the ground. I mean, I know a lot of headmen calling me and saying like, you know, okay, why only these trucks can go? Why can't our trucks go? Like, you know, I get these calls also from certain villages or from those areas. Uh, so, well, it is up to the, the government has all the means and the power. Uh, you know, see, if you look at uh, previous resolutions have come also from the from the assembly, right? Asking for exemption of this law, right? Wherein then the state could, you know, adopt some different uh, forms of uh, thing, which would not then uh, be seen by the uh, locals, the landowners, as somebody infringing on his land rights. These are complex, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, these are complex governance issues, uh, which sadly has not had the attention of the government of the day of the past governments and previous governments until NGT came into the picture, Supreme Court came to the picture. And it's become like a hot potato, you know, so Either on one hand, you have hundreds and thousands of people who have been dependent on this livelihood for ages. So, you know, so suddenly they're stopped. So, you know, it's it's not an easy task. I agree. But you could have brought the stakeholders on board. One of the panelists mentioned there have been hardly any meetings or hardly any, you know, uh, consultation to explain to them how the registration process works, how, you know, what it works. So, you know, I think we need to, there's a lot of things to be fixed and it requires political will to dedicate themselves to sort this problem, you know. Otherwise, uh, precious lives uh, like this keeps, uh, these mishaps, uh, these uh, accidents keep happening. And a lot of, uh, you know, uh, as, uh, you know, there are, I tell you there's a serious lapse of, uh, you know, governance issues, which uh, past governments, present governments, they're all stuck in this, you know, it's like a cycle. You know, where, where do you start and where do you end? It's like a chain, cycle chain, which is continuously going on. So I feel like, you know, there has to be some commitment from the top, from the political leadership, commitment to sort this thing out once and for all, you know. Uh, sure. The resolutions passed by the assembly, for amendment of this uh, MMDR Act uh, 1950, you know, I think 57, uh, hasn't happened, you know. There, I, I guess you recall in the past, there have been a lot of uh, visits to Delhi to resolve this problem, uh, but it has not happened. So the government, the departments of the day, the ministries of the day have to then enforce the law, and then it is in conflict with the with the locals at the ground level. So the local at the ground level, you know, has a sense that, okay, this is my land. The Supreme Court has also said, okay, you own the land, but you comply with the environmental issues. But somebody has to go down to the ground and explain all this, you know. So I tell thing... you, if the, if the government were to bring on board governance issues to sort out this matter at the village level, at the local level, this can be stopped, you know. Then bring them into a regulated manner, bring them into a proper manner. One, one point, uh, Nabrun, which I must say, the sad thing about all this, you know, 
besides uh, loss of life, is on one hand, we have uh, governments in the past, governments of the, uh, of the day, expressing you know concern about the funds constraint. All the illegality that's happening is uh, precious revenue for the state, which is uh, total leakage, you know, total leakage of revenue going down the drain. This is the sad uh, part of it, the irony of the whole thing. Absolutely. Uh, Agnes Kharsheng, well, irrespective of whether yesterday's incident was related to coal mining or not, one thing seems clear that the menace of illegal coal mining is far from over in Meghalaya. So, under the circumstances, for somebody, uh, you have been uh, anti-coal mining crusader. Cru crusader. Uh, under the circumstances, what is your appeal to the government? What do you want to say to the government? Uh, I would say the government provide me a team and I will go and find out the truth so that we have to stop all this. The people cannot just die like this. And why are people dying? Falling. Now they give a reply that we cannot. We have a team. They have gone. The police have gone. Let them bring out also the reality. We want them to. Uh, provide us good quality of uh, experts and for us also and either even the media the media should be protected to go and gather information you cannot just say that government so, government so we are also the government so what you are saying is the process the process has to be transparent yes definitely it has to be transparent because Suddenly, we have just seen people buying land, buying uh, property and all this. Where's the money coming from? People are not getting food. People are not getting even a, a proper education. They have to pay. They have to, the poor people, they, ha they, feel, they are worried because they have to pay to uh, schools. When, when, the, when we have, be, we should be having, uh, the poor should be helped. So why is nobody speaking out? And where's the money coming from? That has to be, we cannot promote uh, violence. And who is promoting violence? All that, transparency, transparency, because people are dying. Six people have died. Earlier also, in Ksan, so many died. And maybe there are more deaths which are not coming out in in uh, in January, 1st January, one person, his name was Anil, he was buried in those areas, near those areas. But it was all hush-hush. Very, very concerning there. Big allegations there by the social activist Agnes Karshing. John Karshing, John Karshing, Chairman, Grand Council of Chiefs. Uh, don't you think the traditional bodies can still play a big role in this, at least when it comes to safe, when it comes to a safety part? And uh, well, we do understand that uh, they also have their own limit limitations when it comes to these mining areas. But still, uh, they have a clout. People still listen to them. Can something be done? Yeah. I agree with you on that uh, on that matter, but uh, like I said, you know, uh, like one of the panelists has also mentioned, this uh, activity has uh, you know has spread out in such a way that uh, you know there's a lot of things happening which uh, which uh, you know it's like opening a Pandora's box. Okay, so again i'm talking about governance issues when i say governance issues the traditional institutions also can play a role a very effective role now but gov you know uh it is uh, the safety issue is also there you know there's an organized uh, racket going on there's an organized racket going on uh with the past incidents that have happened and today's uh, yesterday's uh, whatever that has happened so you can well imagine there's a very very well organized racket right and, and and it requires the uh, everyone joining hands together and sorting this out. The traditional heads will very well uh, come forward, but as I said, this matter, like you know, it's like uh, in those areas, almost uh, every many houses are involved in in coal in the past. 
Now, livelihood issues, how do you provide them opportunities? You know, there was a lot of gatherings, a lot of meetings by so many of the people, the residents of that area wanting some other alternative means of livelihood. You know, so it's, it cannot be a one-way issue. There has to be a, a multiple approach to this very complex, difficult uh, problem, right? And uh, uh, thankfully, the thankfully the government very, of India, the very complex has situation. In Basically, it continues to be a complex situation. Uh, Navabhatiarji, we're running out of time very quickly. Uh, what is practically, practically the way forward in the short run, if there is any? Navaru, there is there is a way. And I'll tell you, and I think you'll agree, that pro prohibition, ban, restriction, these are all short-term measures. Once you lengthen, you have seen in states where prohibition was there, if uh, liquor, if uh, one lakh liter liquor was being uh, consumed, when prohibition came, it jumped up to two lakh liters. I'm just giving you a figurative example. So these type of restrictions and bans will not be successful if it is pulled for a long time. And it becomes a windfall for some when those who wield the power, because they have the wherewithal within their ambit to break those restrictions. And when there is, and it is humanly impossible to impose a ban on anything, I'm not only talking of coal, for, la, for six years, seven years. It is not impos uh, possible because these raw materials are required. You see, uh, as far as the cement companies, the power plants in cement companies, how are they running? Absolutely. You basically, think, basically yeah. to cut it short, we are running, running, short of time to cut it short well scientific mining however difficult it may be uh, in the area probably is the only way out and safety needs to be of prime concern thank you so much mr navabhatiarji agnes kashing uh, john kashing and hh mormon for joining us on the bottom line that's a wrap